Hey, it's Cole here, and welcome back to another video. Today, we're going over the NFC South for my record predictions. Talking about every single team, giving my thoughts on every single team, and at the end of the day, I'll give you my uh, prediction on how I think the whole order of the teams will go in style. So, let's go ahead and start with the first team in this division, the Atlanta Falcons. So, with the Atlanta Falcons, they're, they're just not good. But let's start with their offseason. In, um, so, Calvin Ridley, suspension out for a year for gambling on games and stuff, which I think is insane compared to maybe what Deshaun Watson will be getting, but that's a whole different video. They signed Marcus Mariota, which I don't get. He's, for some reason, their QB1. I mean, I just don't get why he's the guy they go after um, out, of, out of all quarterbacks. At that point, just let Desmond Ritter ride it out for the whole year. If Marcus Mariota is the guy you want to start your season with, um, they signed Casey Hayward, which, I mean, at the end, it's a good move to get him, but, like, why is he going to the Falcons? Out of all teams, why is he going to the Falcons? He's a good cornerback. He's a good solid number two, number three cornerback that, uh, still has a few years left. We signed Grady, uh, Grady Jarrett, which is pretty solid, and obviously, they traded their, uh, franchise quarterback, uh, Matt Ryan, to the Indianapolis Colts for a few picks. I think it was, or it may have just been a second round pick, I'm not too sure. Traded for wide receiver Brian Edwards to help with that depth. Obviously, for the Calvin Ridley suspension. So, it was an okay for agency. I mean, they fixed some holes. They filled some holes. Um, but I just don't get some of these moves of from the player-wise. I mean, Casey Hayward, why the Falcons? I don't get the Marcus Mariota signing. I know you need the quarterback, but I mean, just start. Uh, just, just start Desmond Ritter at that point. Then the draft. Um, the draft was not that bad for the uh, Atlanta Falcons overall. But Drake London with that eighth overall pick. He's good, and he's athletic. He, they're tall. And I mean, I feel like that's what the Falcons are going with their their receivers. Um, red zone threats, you know, physical receivers. But there are some other good players. And as if, if you saw my top five receivers in this draft, my number uh, one guy was Chris Olave. So, I mean, if they would have got him, I would have loved it. I think James Williams was my number two. But obviously the injury, so he was going to fall farther. But it, they could have drafted a better receiver in this slot for sure. But, um... I, I mean, I get this. I get the need for going with receiver. I think Calvin Ridley was suspended at this time already, so they needed a receiver in general. It makes sense to go for him, and um, this was this was a solid pick in general, just for the need. And I mean, does and he's still good. Just I think there were better receivers before him. And then um, they drafted Desmond Ritter in the third round after the the falling of QBs, which I think he was the first first quarterback to go after Kenny Pickett. It was an okay draft, okay offseason overall for the Atlanta Falcons, but nothing really too much to talk about overall because this isn't going to be a good team. Now, let's talk about this team overall. It bad QB play. They're not going to have to, it's not going to be good. I don't, exp I don't, Mark, I don't think Marcus Mariota is going to go to his rookie, his rookie season. I really don't. Um, receiving core is not going to be too good. Um, other than Kyle Pitts and maybe, you know, um, uh, Drake London. Brian Edwards is fine, but he'll be like their number two receiver, which he isn't a number two receiver. Um, it just isn't a, it just isn't good for the Atlanta Falcons. But and you also have Cordell Patterson. I mean, that's a plus as always. It, it's always it's always a plus to have Cordell Patterson on your team. And then the defense. Um, this Casey Hayward and AJ Terrell pair. It's nice. It's very good. Um, at the cornerback position, AJ Terrell getting better and better every year. Um, underrated cornerback, you could say. And then Casey Hayward, also an underrated quarterback, cornerback in this league. Um, he is older, so that juice may not be with him all, um, all the time anymore. But he's still still a good cornerback. I'm surprised he just didn't go to a contender with how old he is now. Who knows? Who knows? The rest of this defense isn't good. The rest of this defense is just not good. Bad safeties <laughs> with Richie Grant and Eric Harris. It, it's not good. Um, bad at oh, the edge rushers. Who are their edge rushers? Who knows? Who the flip knows who their edge rushers are? Because I don't. I don't know who their edge rushers are. Because um, it just isn't a good defense. And that's really going to hinder them throughout this season. And um, my win record for them is zero wins to three wins. Maybe four wins. I really think. And I, I'm not saying this because I want just to say this. They could go 0-17. They could go 0-17. And, and I'm... They could they could go 0-17. And, and let me just... Give me one second. Let me just pull my... Uh, my my This, this sub-website up. They play the Saints. 
Rams, the Seahawks, Browns. That might be the win. That might be the only game they could win. Because at that point, Deshaun Watson isn't playing. Um, Buccaneers, 49ers, Bengals, Panthers, Chargers, Panthers again. Bears might be a winnable game. Commanders, um, Steelers, Saints, um, the Ravens, Cardinals, and Buccaneers. The only winnable games I think out of these games, the Browns game at week four, and the Bears game on week 11. Maybe the Seahawks game, and maybe one of the Panthers games, because it's a division rival game, and who knows? Who knows what could happen? Just, man, this is not a good year for the Atlanta Falcons. Not a good year for the Atlanta Falcons at all, but... We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. And let's go to my next team on the list in the NFC South. The Carolina Panthers, who did just unveil a, a new helmet pretty recently. Let's go. So I did realize I forgot the little uh, thing up here for the Atlanta Falcons, but uh, I'm not I don't feel like editing it back in. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna forget it, but we do have the Panthers one and all the rest of the ones up here. So let's go. The Panthers uh, free agency. They were signed Ian Thomas, which I think was solid. Um, he's a solid tight end. Um, they resigned Dante Jackson. Love the move. Love Dante Jackson. And then they re, um, obviously big move. Resigned DJ Moore. Great, great move. He's very similar to Terry McLaurin. And um, as as they are both arguably top fifteen um, receivers, and they just need quarterback help, bro. They need quarterback help. And I think if they can get their right, that right quarterback, they can unleash their max potential in the NFL. And obviously, they trade for Baker Mayfield for like a conditional fifth round pick. That's a solid move for Baker Mayfield. But now, I don't know how much that pushes them over the top. He's better than Sam Darnold, I would say that. But I don't see that as a, a thing that pushes them over the top to even make the playoffs. I just don't see that happening. He'll be a better quarterback. That might he might give them an edge over a game or two now, but it, it won't, I don't think it makes them a playoff contender. Um, I, I just not the biggest move, but I I can see why they did it, and it was only for a fifth round pick, so it's not that biggest commitment. Unlike a Sam Darnold, um, but we'll see who wins that battle. But it, it, I feel like it's gonna be Baker Mayfield no matter what. Um, but we'll, again, we'll see. We'll see. Let's talk about this draft. They uh, draft Iki Okongwu in this first round here, which was a good, which was a good uh, draft to um, solidify that uh, tackle spot. Um, he's a great, great um, tackle. Could be the best tackle out of this draft when if everything's said and done. Who knows? We'll see. Um, absolute, absolute monster. He's a bully. He's an absolute bully. And then they drafted obviously Matt Corral in the third round. And that was another um, one of those quarterbacks that did fall. Some people say he might go in the first, second round. He did go in the third round after, obviously, that fall, um, falling of quarterbacks in this draft. And we'll see what happens with him. Um, obviously, now he has to sit behind two quarterbacks now. But um, maybe he can learn from Baker Mayfield. Maybe he can learn from Sam Darnold in that coaching staff. But overall, it is what it is, really. It is what it is, really. Maybe he, maybe he can become that potential um, future quarterback for the uh, Carolina Panthers. But overall, Panthers had a solid offseason. Uh, I like the re-signing. Um, I like some of their moves for the most part. Not that biggest uh, free agency moves, personally. I mean, I know they got Matthew Ignitis in free agency. That wasn't a terrible move. I do like him at defensive tackle, for sure. Uh, but the draft wasn't as bad, either. Um, it was a solid uh, draft, as well. So let's go ahead and talk about the uh, team. Team overall. So let's go to that. Um, QB. I like I said a little bit over um, later. QB dilemma. What's happening with that man? I really don't know. I really, really don't know. And um, I think Baker Mayfield wins that. Uh, he maybe even has it solidified already in the mind of the coach. But who knows? Um, maybe not. Maybe so. Um, Christian McCaffrey. He's a great. He's a great running back. He's a top five running back. If he can stay healthy, hopefully he can. But if not, it's not looking good for the rest of his career for Christian McCaffrey. We'll see what happens. I know we talked about the same thing for Saquon Barkley in the last video. Hopefully he can stay healthy because man, he can be a really, really good running back. And we don't we don't see running backs like him, man. I mean we do, but like we don't at the same time. I also like the receiving core. I really do. Um DJ Moore. Um we'll see what happens with Robbie Anderson. 
Is he gonna retire? Who knows? I don't. I st he might still be retiring. Uh, who knows though? I, I do like Shai Smith. I do like um oh number eighty eight. I forgot his name, but I do like him as well. And then they also do have a bad loss line. I I do like Iggy. I think he'll be a great off the tackle for the, for his career. But overall, this off the line is not good. It's not a good off the line at all. But um, so don't let that draft pick fool you about how bad this off the line is for the Carolina Panthers. Let's talk about this defense, which I think is better, a lot better than this defensive line or this offense. But the defensive line, however, is good. Brian Burns, Derek Brown, Matthew Ioannidis. It's it's better. It's definitely better. I like Brian Burns, obviously. Great, great edge rusher. Derek Brown, Matthew Ioannidis. Definitely two tackles in the middle that are really going to make a difference. Then um, a good secondary. Dante Jackson, obviously. J.C. Horn, who they drafted two years ago. And once he comes back from injury, he'll be good. Um, I know they uh, traded for that one receiver from Jacksonville. And then um, Jeremy Chin. Definitely a good safety there. And then it's okay, linebacker core. I know that I, I, I like Shaq Thomas there. I do like Shaq Thomas. And then, again, good defense. Good defense. Definitely better than our offense. And if they're going to win lots of games, it's definitely going to because going to be because of their defense, not their offense. You know, their offense is going to score 21 points maybe. But, it, but the defense is going to, you know, keep them, the other team down like 10, you know, is 14 points in a game. And that's what's going to get them wins, you know. Um, or maybe not even 21 points for the offense. Offense might even get, like, 14 points. The, the other team's going to get, like, 10. But I really like this defense. I think this defense can really make big moves this uh, this season. And the Panthers, I think they can get 5 to 8 wins. Not playoff worthy, but maybe they're getting somewhere. Maybe they're getting somewhere. But they do need a quarterback, though. They do need a, they do need a quarterback, though. Definitely, and um, I don't think Baker Mayfield's that guy. I don't think Sam, Sam Darnold's that guy. Um, but we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. So, let's head to the next team on this list. And that next team, I believe, on my notes, is the New Orleans Saints. The Saints um, didn't have the best of seasons last year. Obviously, the James Winston injury really did derail their seasons, you could say. But now they're back with Jameis Winston once again, not Taysom Hill at quarterback, thankfully, because that would have been bad if we're really saying. Um, but let's go ahead and talk about everything. Coaching, uh, mainly uh, the start off here, Sean Payton retires. Um, I don't know what he's up to now, but he does retire for the uh, Saints. And then they hire Dennis Allen. And now let's go ahead into the offseason for free agency. Um... They did lose Teron Armstead to the Miami Dolphins, so that is one thing. And then, I guess, Kamara suspension. We'll see what happens to that. He's not officially suspended just yet, but we'll see. Maybe maybe he might get suspended. Maybe he won't, and he'll be ready for the season to start. But now let's actually get into free agency. They resigned Jameis Winston, and he'll be the quarterback going into the season, which will be uh, solid uh, for the options they really did have. And um, they signed Marcus May, which was a good signing for their safety, and then also Tyron Matthew. And that, that's a good safety duo back there And uh, for the um, New Orleans Saints. And um, it's looking pretty good um, for that secondary with Marshawn Lattimore and also, um, who was it, P.J. Williams? I think that's the Williams they have, not Marcus, because I think Marcus is the, is the other safety they would have had, but I think he's on a different team now. And then they also signed Jarvis Landry, so getting some of those LSU boys back in New Orleans, and that's a pretty solid receiving core uh, once Michael Thomas does get back. And then let's go to the draft. They trip to pick 11 with the Washington Commanders, and they select Chris Olave. I don't know if they were scared of the Washington Commanders selecting Chris Olave, um, if that was a possible um, scenario they thought of, and that's why they traded up. Um, but... They do draft um, him in that first round. They also had another pick in the first round. I forget from what trade, uh, but they did have another uh, pick in that first round. And they draft off the tackle Trevor Penning, probably going to replace Teron Armstead. Obviously not as good, but, you know, replacements in the draft. And not a terrible pick. Not the biggest fan of Trevor Penning, but I understand it. Um, so this free agency and draft... Uh, offseason wasn't that bad. Um, made some pretty good moves, especially with the Marcus Man, Tyrion Matthew signing. Pretty good safety duo back there. And I like the Jarvis Landry signing for sure. And um, I think, and personally, they got the best receiver in the draft. 
you know, traded up for the best receiver in the draft. I think that's a good trade up. And um, they really didn't have to give up too much. It was like a third and a fourth or something like that. It was a third and a fifth. It, was, it wasn't that bad at all. So let's go ahead and talk about this team because this team, I think, can be and this could be a playoff team. Depends how all the other teams in the in the conference really do. But the, if it reaches its full potential, could be a playoff team. Um, James Winston. It, it also depends how he plays because I don't know. You know, he could have a really good season and he could play out of his mind. You know, he can be his. You know, he could score. He can get thirty touchdowns. He could. You know, maybe 15 interceptions and have a great season. But maybe he could have a 30-30 season. 30 touchdowns, 30 interceptions. That's also entirely possible. And we don't know how that injury is going to affect him also. Um, but Seamus Winston, I think, could be a good quarterback um, this this next season with the receiver he has. And also, not it's not a bad offensive line that the Saints have. Not terrible at all. And obviously, the solid receiver core that they do have with MT once he is uh, better. And then Jarvis Landry and Chris Olave, which I think is pretty solid too. And then again, oh, and it's an okay off. Time. It's it's pretty solid. Um, nothing crazy, but I think their main their main focus is their skill positions at with Michael Thomas, Jarvis Landry, and then also uh, Chris Olave right there. Their defense, I think, obviously, their secondary is that is the main focus we want to talk about with um, Marshawn Lattimore. Uh, he might be in some hot waters um, outside of football. I think I'm not too sure though. Um, obviously Marcus May, good setting there. Um, Tyron Matthew, um, Williams, that's a good secondary. That's a really good secondary that the Saints have. Um, they do have a little bit of a depleted linebacker core. Um, I know I like the Mario Davis. Um, obviously he's been a good linebacker for years now. He's getting older on the little older side, but still a good linebacker. But other than that, it's not that good of a linebacker core, and it's a little bit of uh, a depleted one. And it's a solid off the line. I, I like Cam Jordan. Uh, he's been a good corner, uh, not cornerback, good uh, defensive lineman for a while. Peyton Turner, who they drafted a few years back, and then uh, Davenport, not too bad at all. Solid defensive line, um, but not too impactful. I mean, not the most impactful, but it, they can be impactful for, uh, when they can. So this isn't a bad, bad team for the for the New Orleans Saints. Definitely could be better. Definitely could have made a few more moves, but I, I get where the Saints are going with this. Um, and we'll see what happens, man. We will see what happens with the New Orleans Saints. And um, I think the future, definitely looking for their future quarterback. And uh, we'll see. So I can see them getting six to nine wins in this uh, in this next season. And um, maybe if, again, if everything works out, they play their potential, maybe they can be a playoff team. And... Um, that's definitely possible, and we'll see what happens. So let's go to the final team in this NFC South division, and that's the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they're they're gonna win. They're gonna win this division. Let's let me just get that out of the way. But let let's talk about this um this this overall team. Um, what a wild off season they had. Bruce Arians steps down as head coach. They um. They bring in Todd Bowles, or I mean, it was in-house um, signing, or I guess call-up, I guess. And he's now the new head coach. Tom Brady, he, he, he retires, and then he unretires. I don't know what happened there. And then also Ali Marpet retires. I don't know if it was because of Tom Brady, or if he just really wanted to retire. But hey, best of luck to him. So that's what happened there. Now let's talk about this offseason free agency. They re-signed Leonard Fournette, they re-signed Ryan Jensen, and then um, they signed Logan Ryan to that secondary, and also signed uh, Russell Gage. It, they made some solid moves, they made some death signing, overall it wasn't anything crazy. Um, I mean, they didn't really need to do anything crazy, if we're being completely honest, like, maybe some free agency, uh, some off the line help in free agency, but it, what, it didn't need to be too much, you know. They were just one game away, pretty much one play away, away um, defensively, away from winning uh, or going to the Super Bowl. I don't know how they let Cooper Cup get that far away and get that much operation to catch that ball, but it makes sense that they didn't do too much here in free agency and just mainly get some of their guys back and get some more depth players. I really like that Russell Gage setting. I think he'll be great in the slot in this uh, this season. So the draft. Um, 
they didn't have a first round pick, but I think in the the first um pick they had in the second round, I think it was the first pick in the second round, and they selected defensive lineman Logan Hall. So we'll see what happens with him, and uh, maybe he can be a pretty solid um, player uh, when it all comes um when it, you know when it all ends um you know ten years down the line. Um, but team talk, just talking about the team. Obviously Tom Brady, best quarterback of all time, probably in top five quarterback. He's just gonna be good. I mean, like he's just not not gonna be good if he somehow is this if he somehow just doesn't play great this year. He I don't know what happened. <laughs> I don't know what happens. But no, obviously they have Tom Brady. That that gets him into the playoffs a hundred percent. That gets him into the playoffs a hundred percent. Okay. And then, obviously, the receiving core of Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, uh, when he's healthy, and uh, Russell Gage, I really like that. I really like their tight ends. Cameron Brait in uh, signing Kyle Rudolph. Um, that, that was pretty solid. And then, great off the line was was pretty good, too. Um, obviously, they lost Ali Marpet, but that's still not too bad. And, um, obviously, they got um, Werfs, Tristan Werfs. What a draft pick. You know, he, he was like pick 15 or something. He's the best off to tackle in that draft. Absolutely amazing. And then going into this defense, still defensive line. I mean, obviously with Vita Vea, um, I, I think, do they still have Sue? I think so, maybe. But still, a pretty solid defensive line overall for that um, for that uh, Buccaneers defense. Uh, linebacker core, that, that's a good one. That's a good one. With Devin White, Levante David, and, and Shaquille Barrett. Um... That's something that you don't really get that much. I mean, that's a great defensive line. Obviously, Devin White is still very young. Levante David, that veteran guy in that defensive core. And then Shaq Barrett, Sack Machine. And uh, solid secondary. Um, Signing of Logan Ryan wasn't too bad. Um, Sean Murphy Bunting, he's an okay corner. I like Mike Edwards as a safety slash corner. Uh, Winfield Jr., um, obviously, he's really coming to his own. You know, since that's your bull, absolute great. And then I really like uh, Carl Tim Davis. This isn't this isn't a bad team, obviously. Um, I do have them giving eleven to fifteen wins. I they could really do it, man. Um, this is a good team, obviously. I mean, as long as you have Tom Brady, you can do a lot of things, and obviously, um, they'll make the playoffs. They'll possibly get a first round bye. Um, so we'll see what happens with this um with this team, and I really think this is gonna be a really good team. So now let's talk about this and uh, with this the uh this division, man. Um. Let's do this, man. Let's do this. So, with the fourth team that I have in finishing last in the division, the Atlanta Falcons. That, that was pretty obvious. They just don't have a good team. It is a pretty bad team for the Atlanta Falcons. Um, next, number three, is the Carolina Panthers. I think they have the third best quarterback in this division, obviously. Um, I like their defense, but their offense is, isn't that good. Their offense isn't that good other than their receiving core and maybe their, I mean, in their running back, but how healthy is he going to be? Don't like their offensive line. I don't really like their offense. Saints, not a bad, not a bad team. I like their defense. Their offense is solid. You could say it better than the Panthers offense, um, especially when everybody's healthy. Um, now, obviously, number one is the Bucks. That was, was was pretty obvious. They'll win the division. They might get a bye week in the playoffs, and they'll be cruising throughout the season for um for the season in this division. So that's it, man. That's it for my NFC South um division predictions. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope you guys enjoyed the NFC East predictions that I did post. So I'll see you guys next time. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Peace out.